of the Lord. They know the Lord and they may experience the Lord. We thank God for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to praise Him. And we ought to show some sign. Amen. Amen. We ought to show some sign that we know the Lord. We ought to clap our hands. We ought to stomp our feet. We ought to wave our hands and shout unto the Lord. Amen. For we know Him. And He is God all by Himself. Thank God for another privilege to honor him today. Let me call your attention to Psalms. The book is Psalms in the Old Testament. The book is Psalms. The passage is Psalm number 20, verses 4 and 5. Psalm number 20, verses 4 and 5. I want to remind you, we serve the awesome God. Psalm, Psalm number 20, verses 4 and 5. When you found it, you will discover these words. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation. In the name of our God, we will set up our banner. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. I want to talk about your heart's desire. All right. Your heart's desire. All right, make it plain. Now make it plain. Regardless of what we go through, regardless of the conditions that we find ourselves in. Yes, sir. We want to be winners. All right. Regardless of how things go around us, every person in the room wants to win. All right. In the text, we find David, a warrior, a great warrior. And in between battles, David stops here in, in chapter in number 20, and he says to us, that he wants to win, therefore he has a pep talk with the troops. Every now and then, if you really want to win, you have to get with those who are fighting in the battle with you. And you have to encourage them to remind them that God is with us. Amen. David, in the midst of battle, he, he lost some battles, he won some battles, and Many times we think battles are just physical battles and struggles that we find ourselves in. But there is somebody battling in the room right now. Right now. You may be in a battle with your mental state of mind. You may be in a battle with commitment. You may be in a war, in a battle with your spiritual walk with God. All of us in the room battle and fight with something. And as we go through this fight, the Apostle Paul reminds us in Ephesians that there's a war going on, and it is not a flesh and blood war. All right. It is a war in the spirit, in the upper realm where we can't see. There's a battle, there's a war going on all around us. Yes, sir. There's a fight in the heavens between good and evil. Yeah, yeah. And we're just caught up in the middle of it. Sure, you're right. You see, the devil is really not after you. He's not really fighting you, regardless of how you feel or of what he does with you. He's not really after you. You just happen to be a pawn that sits between him and God. And because God has shot him down from the sky, from the heavens, like a flash of lightning, he's still trying to get back at God. Yes, yes. And because he's trying to get back at God, every now and then he make you do foolish things. No, you're right. He curses you. He 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 prompts you. He he pulls at you and he nags at you. And he makes you act like you are of him and not of God. Yeah, yeah. You remember the last time somebody cursed you out and you felt like uh, I gotta return the favor? Yeah. You know, in the 21st century, I found out that, that church folk cuss too. They, they really lose their cool on a regular. They, 
and, and some on. of them even lose their cool in the church house. You don't trap them. You don't trap them. Because there's a war Show you right. going on. There's a fight. Yes. And the fight has nothing really to do with you. It's, it's just the devil trying to get back at God. And what he's trying to do is make you act up so others will see you act up. So they will say that your God is not the true and the living God. All right. And you have to understand that because you're not the, the main master plan, God is trying to use you so he can get the glory. Yes, God is looking for you to show up in a godly way so God can receive glory on his behalf. Uh -huh. That's why we ought not miss our pep talks on Sunday. Uh -huh. <laughs> we ought not miss our pep rallies on Wednesday. All right. We ought not, women and men, when we meet as a group, we ought not miss our pep rallies on Tuesday. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. We ought to show up with the group of this militia so we can sharpen each other for the battle. All right. The psalmist says that iron sharpens iron right. and so does one brother to the other. We have to get together to sharpen each other. All right. It's not because we are, we are so needed. It's not because we are so down and out. It's simply because we need each other. All right. I told you on last week that we have to keep the fire burning for the Lord. And as we keep the fire burning, we have to keep putting another log on the fire. Yes. If you want to put the fire out, I said to you last week that in that pot belly stove that we had, when we got ready to put the fire out, we didn't have to beat the fire down. We just pulled the log from the fire. Uh -huh. And as we pulled the log from the fire, the fire was thrown in, but surely died. Yeah, yeah. I tell you today what the devil has done to the local church is that he has pulled logs from the fire. Somebody walked away because they got mad. Somebody walked away because somebody looked at them the wrong way. Somebody walked away because somebody brought their names up in the conversation. Somebody walked away because the preacher won't let them do what they want to do. Folk just walk away because they allow God to use them, and then they allow the devil to take over their use. All right, all right. It's because we're in a battle. Yeah. And in the battle, we ought to be in it to win. All right. If you are a Christian, if you're born again, if you say you love the Lord, you ought to be in it to win it. Let me tell you, I never like losing. I, I, I never like sitting on the pine. I, I, I never like watching everybody else rejoice while my team walk away from the baseball down and with our head down. I, I hate losing, and you ought to hate losing. It's a battle. It's a war going on. And the devil has coerced us to believe that we can fight this battle by ourselves. All right. And so he segregated us. He, he pushes us aside. He, he separates us by races. He, he separates us by, by our national origin. He separates us by our creed. He separates us even by our religion. So we get out there on our own by ourselves. And there is no God. First point to you today is found right there in the text. We need to understand that we need the presence of God. Yes, we need the presence of God. The, the writer David, David is saying to us that God needs to answer us in time of trouble. Right. He says, he said, if you're in trouble, you need the Almighty God to answer you. Now, now, when you got things going well, don't act like you got it going on and you all that and a bag of everything else. You need to know that you need God's presence regardless of how you're going and what you're going through. All right, all right now. He says, he says in verse number one, may the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Let us, may the God of Jacob defend your cause. We need God to defend our cause. Let me tell you, your friend will tell you they will stand up for you. But when the heat get hot, they will run the other way and they will leave you out there to hang by yourself. In the 1980s, unions were big. And unions were those spokespersons for individuals who were employees and they would take the employee side when they go against major companies. I said to a young man one day, unions are good, but jobs are so much better. <laughs> right. 
Because if you find yourself uniting with somebody else and you go before the big organization and you stand behind and in front of the mahogany desk, you look around, all 12 of your buddies that said they will be there with you, they will show up at another location and tell you they got lost. And now even with GPS, they'll find themselves somewhere else. You can't depend on people, you can't depend on friends, you can't depend on co-workers, so you need the presence of God. I just stopped by to tell you, if you're not in trouble, you're coming out of trouble. If you're not coming out of trouble, you're headed for trouble. And if you're not headed for trouble, coming out of trouble, you're in trouble right now. Because trouble knows your address. Trouble knows where to find you. Trouble knows your email address and your Twitter account. Trouble knows your Facebook account. Trouble knows what you like and trouble knows where you've been. So trouble will always bring up who you used to be. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. David says that, that the Lord, I need your presence in time. Of trouble. May you send me help. God, send me help and give me sanctuary. Give me a clear conscience. Give me peace of mind. Let me tell you, you can have a cow king bed and never get an ounce of sleep. It's not because the bed is what you depend on. It's the God in heaven you need to lean on. I like it when the songwriter says, I'm leaning, I'm leaning. I am leaning. Let me tell you, you better start leaning on Jesus and depending on him because if you don't lean on him and depend on him, you're going to find yourself out there all by yourself. Oh, you're right. right. David says, may the Lord grant you. Mm -hmm. What he's talking about in the verses 1 to 3, he, he talks about the fact that we have burnt offerings that we give unto the Lord. We make sacrifices unto the Lord. And they made it a regular occurrence when they did things unto the Lord and did things for the Lord. But they, God is not pleased with our burnt offerings. Yes, sir. God is not pleased with our sacrifices. Yes, God is more concerned about your heart than he is about your sacrifice. Right. Because God knows that he can get your heart right. He'll get you right. When I look at folk that, that makes matters worse from one day to the other, from one year to the other, and I see people stuck in the same rut they were stuck in last year, it's because they never got their hearts right. That's right. When you get your heart right, your body will follow. When, when you get your heart right, your speech will follow. When you get your heart right, your work ethics will follow. Yeah, yeah. The Bible says if a man doesn't work, you all not eating. Matthew Davis chapter 10 verse number 12 says he ought to start with death. <laughs> the Bible says if he just refuses to work. It didn't say if he was in between jobs. It didn't say if he, he couldn't find the right job. It says if he refuses to work, he ought to stop at death. He ought to just, just we ought to just watch him wither away. God is not pleased with our sacrifices. He's not pleased with what we do. And just because we're doing it to, to, to glorify him, because we don't glorify him unless we have the right moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can only glorify God when we're looking to give God the glory. Let me tell you, you can help somebody out today and you can brag about it. God gets no glory in it simply because the glory ought to always go to God and God alone. When you take the glory, then God is not pleased with you taking his glory. You're right. Acts chapter, Acts chapter 12, uh, verses, verse, verses number 20 and 21, when you read the text, you will find out that there was a day that Herod stood up. And he stood up and he gave, gave a great oration. And when he gave a great oration, the people said, this is not the voice of a man, this is the voice of a God. And the Bible says, in the next few verses, the Bible says that the earthworm, the skinworm, ate up his body and he gave up the ghost because he did not give God the ghost. Let me say to all of you who are part of first impression, if you don't shuffle people in your seat with a smile, if you don't bless them because you're giving God the glory, God is not pleased with your work. Right. Let me say to those who can sing better than I can, just a tad bit better, and you think you're doing real good, you need to understand if you're not singing to the glory of God, then you are not giving God the glory, and God is not satisfied. Right. 
Let me say to those who pray loud and long prayers, regardless of how long your prayer is, regardless of how loud your prayer is, if God doesn't get the glory and your motive is not to praise God, God is not satisfied with you. The Bible even says that if we don't walk in faith, if we will walk in faith, it is impossible to please God. In other words, if you asking God to give you the desires of your heart, you ought to walk in faith with God. You may not see it right now. You may not see it in two months, but you just keep walking in faith. And as you walk in faith with God, God will strengthen your faith. You ought, to, you, ought to, you ought to trust God for it. You ought to trust that God will deliver. God will make it happen. God will do it even though you can't do it. Let me just say to you, there's nothing that we can do on our own. We're just going through the motion. There are so many people that just exist. And they, they're not living, they're just existing. They're just going from one thing to the other. And the problem is everybody else sees their existence. Everybody else knows that you got better potential than you have demonstrated. But you think you're fooling the people. But God knows that he has put some stuff in you. And you need to give it all up to God. Amen. Folk like to ask the question, well, preacher, why are you running here? Why do you do that? And why do you get involved in this? Because when I my tongue cleaves to the roof of my mouth, when they fold my hand in service for the very last time, when a hush goes to my voice, I want God to help use me up for his glory because I can get reps on the other side. And when I get reps on the other side, I'm going to join in with the four pieces of Christmas crying, holy, 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 blessed is the Lamb that was that was slain before the foundation yes, of the world. He says, may, 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 our God, may God grant you according to the desires of your heart. Yeah, there are some things that we wanted from God. God has just not answered the way we want it. There's a young woman right now getting close to 30, getting close to 40. And Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome hadn't shown up yet. But you missed out on Mr. Short, Red, and Rank. And that may have been the one that does. There, there, there are some people right now that's been, been bombarding heaven and honestly bombarding heaven and asking God to give me the desires of my heart. First of all, you need the presence of God. Yes. Secondly, you need to submit unto God. And when you submit unto God, you remind God, God, now I've come to you several times. I've come to you. See, you ought to talk to God like that and ask God, God, now what happened here? What, what's really going on, God? I've come to you several times, and as I've come to you several times, God, you still have not delivered the way I've asked you to deliver. Well, God is saying to us, let's check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. We got to first make sure that our motives are clear, that we, whatever we ask God for, we want to make sure though, that we have the motive of glorifying God. Yeah, yeah. We got to make sure that we have the right connection with God. We got to make sure that we're doing nothing or not doing something that separate us from God. We have to make sure that we walk in step with God. Yeah. And as we walk in step with God, God is able to either change our hearts change our motivation, or change our direction. And whatever you do, God, I'm fine with that. Yeah. Jesus says that when we pray, we ought to say holler to, to, to that name. We, we ought to first give God the glory and thank him for what he's already done. Not only do we thank him for what he's done, we thank him for who he is. How much time a day did you spend time just admiring God and telling God how much I admire you? Oh, Lord, you are wonderful. You are the magnificent God. You are God by yourself. God, I praise you just for who you are, not even to mention what you do. The problem, the problem is we sing songs that talk about what God has done, and that's good too, but we ought to sing songs to honor him, to praise him, and give God the glory. God is concerned about what you're concerned about. Amen. But we have to be concerned about what God is concerned about. Yeah, yeah. The songwriter says, God, break my heart for the things that break your heart. Mm. God's heart is broken. Mm -hmm. When souls are walking around us every day unsafe, mm -hmm. we ought to ask God to break our heart, Lord, for those things that breaks your heart. Yeah, yeah. 
And if our heart and our focus is focused on the things that break God's heart, then God will become pleased. And then if our hearts are broken, we don't just have pity. We empathize and we get up and do some things. Yes. All right. Because when, when our heart is broken, when somebody else is down and out, when somebody else doesn't have food, then we ought to go out and buy them some food. How many times have you went to the, have you gone to the grocery store and you carried two baskets with you? Uh oh, preacher, you messing up now. And when you carry two baskets, you remember that Miss Effie around the corner didn't have. And everything I put in my basket, I put in Miss Effie's basket. You know, that's what, that's what Isaiah is really saying when he talks about the fasting. When we fast, we ought to feed the hungry. When we fast, he's saying that when you're fasting, you ought to still do what you normally do. Still buy what you normally buy, but you ought to give it to somebody else. All right. So what Isaiah is saying is that we ought to take on the burdens of our brothers and sisters, lest we get caught up in the same stuff also. In other words, we ought to bear one another's burdens. And as we bear one another's burden, and as we fast, and we don't eat this, and we don't drink this, we ought to buy this and that for somebody else. Boy, I just told somebody up in this room today. Somebody just, somebody just thumbgasted it right now. It's simply because we have to have things in our lives that God wants in our lives, and our hearts have to be broken to the same thing that God All right, all right. It's broken. It's married couples have to... You have to outdo each other in serving each other. You, you, you can't be the one that absorbs all the blessings. You can't be the one that just takes on all the blessings. Every time you look up, he or she are giving to you, but you're not giving to them. It's when you compete against each other. Let me see if I can bless you better than you can bless me. Let me see if I can serve you better than you can serve me. Let me see if I can think of what you need before you tell me what you need. That's when you turn it over. Philippians, Paul said to Philippians that you ought to think of other folk more highly than yourself. It's because our hearts ought to be turned toward God and our hearts ought to be broken just like God's heart sure you're right. is broken. And when our hearts See the presence of God. The next thing he says, and fulfill all your purposes, all your motives, all your thoughts, and all your plans. All right. God wants to bless you. He wants to do great things in your life, but you don't have to give up yourself for somebody else to be blessed. Yeah. And as you give up yourself for somebody else to be blessed, then God always will bless you more than, than you, you bless them. Yes, sir. I like to tell the story. I like to tell the story when I was at the Holman Street Church. I wore 15, 12, 12 to $15 times. That was my trademark. That's what I like. It was sufficient. I put it on one day. I take it off. I don't sweat in it. If I don't preach that day, I take it off. I put it in the cleaners. I get it out the cleaners. It was 12 to $15. You can laugh right there. It, it was only 12 to $15. So that 12 to $15 tie, because I was putting it on every Sunday and I was glorifying God with it, God has a way of blessing me regardless of what I'm going through. All right. I stopped at the gas station one day and this guy came approaching me. And as he was approaching me, I knew he was going to ask me for some money. So before he asked me, I said, man, let me have $10. He said, man, you knew. You knew. I was going to ask him. He got flat mad because I asked him. <laughs> he got flat mad. I said, man, let me have, man, you knew I was going to ask you for some money. No, I ain't got no money. So after he calmed down, I said, man, why don't you come ride to church with me? He said, well, I don't have the clothes you have. I, I can't dress the way you dress. So I began to take my towel off, and I gave it to him. I took my jacket off, and I gave it to him. So when I walked in the church that day with this brother on my side, he had on my jacket, he had on my tie, and I had a shirt on with a pair of slacks. Amen. One of the traditional deacons walked up to me and said, who do you think you are? You said you're a preacher. And you don't even have a tie on nor a jacket on, and you think folk don't believe you are a preacher. I said to him, well, brother, aren't you glad that I brought this brother off the street? He's with us today. I've given him my jacket. He has the tie on that I had on, and I've given him my tie. 
He said, well, if you know it's your custom to give away tithes, you ought to carry a barrel of tithes in your car with you. Preacher. We have to understand that God is not stuck up on things. God is stuck up on people. And God is more concerned about people than he is concerned about stuff. Planes, helicopters, car accidents can happen all day, every day, and it would be no concern because it's just a bunch of metal and plastic and instruments that's being torn up. The only reason we're concerned about planes, helicopters, and cars being in car accident is because human life is on board. If there was no human life on board, we wouldn't have a ceremony for them. If it wasn't a human life on board, you see capsules going every day that are unmanned capsules. We don't even hear about them. But when you got a person on board, God is concerned about individual people. Yes, yes. And we ought to be concerned right. about individual people. That's right. We ought to be so concerned about people that, that we ought to act like we from Mississippi. Well, we ought to act like we love each other and love flows from heart to heart and breast to breast. We ought to be so concerned about loving other people until when you cry, I sit down beside you and ask you why you cry. And if you're crying for the right cause, I sit with you and cry for you. All right. How many of us ride to church every Sunday? Mm. By show of hands, no, no, no. How many of you ride to church every Sunday in a five-seater and six-seater car and you're the only person in the car? I see people taking selfies and posting them on my way to church to praise the Lord. But there's not a single child in the car. There's not a single person in the car. You bought a car for $35,000, dollars $75,000. You could have bought a motorcycle and have nobody in the car but you. We have to get to a point where our hearts are broken for the same thing that God owns. Yes, sir. Sure you're right. And then God will fulfill our purpose. When we focus on godliness, when we focus on other people, the text declares that God will fulfill our purpose. God will fulfill our plan. The psalmist also says to us today that put your plans before the Lord and he will make them succeed. If you don't put them before the Lord, it'll succeed for a while. But if you put them before the Lord, the Lord will make your plans a great success. You do know you're sitting in a horse pasture now, don't you? You do realize that there were 30-foot trees sitting here at one time, don't you? You do realize that there were bugs and ants and everything around here at one time, don't you? There was, there was drug paraphernalia on this campus. There was sex paraphernalia on this campus. There was booze on this campus. Everything was going on on this campus. But look at what God has done because we put God first and God was able to make things happen on our behalf. Right, sure you're right. And there's somebody in the, in the audience today that said, God blessed me this week. And, and not only has he blessed me this week, he blessed me last week. And I'm not talking about you got more money. I'm not talking about you got a new car. Let me tell you, God woke you up this morning. I just stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know it wasn't honey touching you that woke you up. It wasn't an alarm clock going off that woke you up. If the old folk were here, they would tell you like this. It was God's divine finger that reached down from heaven and touched you with love. And your eyes flew wide open. And for that I said, Lord, I thank you for one more Sunday. Yeah. And so since God has blessed you to wake up one more time, let me just share with you, you got a purpose in your life, and God want to use you for something. God is not just waking you up because you're cool. He's not just waking you up because you're so spiritual. Because I know if he was waking me up because I was spiritual, I would have been dead a long time ago. He is just God, and he wants the glory. He wants the glory. First number five says, we will rejoice in your salvation. This word salvation not only means to be saved from stuff, to be saved from hell fire, but this word in the Hebrew means to be delivered. So my first point was that you want God's presence. My second point is you want God's deliverance. Is there anybody in here today that can justify God deliver me from my own self? Because we, we wreck our 
own self. We in the situation we in because we make crazy decisions. I said to a girl the other day, stop making stupid decisions. Oh, you call me stupid. No, you making stupid decisions because the same decision you made last month, you make the same decision next month, and it's a stupid decision. Yeah. All right. God wants to bless us, and he wants to deliver us, and God has to deliver us from ourselves. Amen. I look at folk that walk away from the average church. They, they just walk away, and, and, and we're beginning to see more people every day that go to church nowhere. They don't go to a mosque. They don't go to the synagogue. They don't go to church anywhere. They've got sick and tired of hypocrites in the church. All right. Well, I went to COVID the other night. And I saw some hypocrites over there. I went to Walmart the other night. And even with the, the, the basket that needed a front end of line, I saw some hypocrites there. What I'm saying to you is people will stop going to church for hypocrites, but they won't stop going to spend their money and hypocrites are in there too. We have to get to a point where we love the Lord so much until nothing and nobody can stop us from doing what we do for the Lord. Salvation. Deliver us. God, God wants to deliver us. God wants to save us from ourselves and save us from other stuff. Because you're sitting here today, God has saved you from some stuff just last night. He, he, he saved you from some stuff. And every time I leave the door, the key hanging in the door, my wife doesn't say anything anymore. She just shakes her head. Lord, have mercy. I guess she's saying I'm married to this old man. He can't even remember to come in and take the key out the door. But what, what I tell her is, because I'm a work horse, don't pile me down with stuff where I can't even use one hand to take the key out the door. Are you with me? If I had a free hand, then I'd remember to take the key out the door. Are you with me? All right. So we have to understand, we have to understand that God has kept us all night long, and he kept us today. And because you came to church, that tells me that God has kept you in your right mind. You couldn't keep yourself. And I watch people every day that are young people that stole out of their mind. Young people who can't think right. Young people who think they got it going on. And they're doing the same old thing. Let me just share with you. It's not because I'm so spiritual. Not because I've been so good. It's because of the almighty God that I serve. He has kept my mind. And let me tell you, you can have money, but if you don't have your mind, you don't have very much. If you, you can have a new car, but you don't have a mind to be in the ground, you don't have that much. That's why I tell women, take that plastic off those couches. Let somebody sit on there because when you out of here, the other woman going to sit on there, while on there, and let her grandchildren play on there. So you better take that color off that, off that couch and you better enjoy it while you can. Go to some people's house, they got fine china. Nobody can take that china out of the, out of the cabinet, china cabinet. And, and they dust it off every now and then as if it's a god. Let me tell you, when you dead and gone, we all gonna come by there and eat fried chicken on that channel. <laughs> you better enjoy it now <laughs> because we gonna eat on it later. You better not let me know you going out of here because when you go out of that first place, I'm going to have. Y'all still have that china cabin in the front room? Wipe it off real good. I'm coming over to eat me some fried chicken on that fine channel. So we want God in the midst of our battles, in the midst of the wars that's going on, we want God to be present. Then we want God's deliverance. And thirdly, we want God's assurance. We want, we want God's assurance. We, I just said insurance because insurance work kind of like this. You pay it for 20 years. And when you get to the end of that 20 years, if you're not dead, nobody benefits from it. And then if you choose to get a whole life policy, you cash it in. Now they're going to charge you for getting your own money. That's how insurance works. And then if you never have an accident or you never die, Insurance is something you put in for all these years and no one gets the benefit. But when I talk about assurance, it is the favor of God and, and in his presence and in his deliverance, he gives us assurance. And that's what David is talking, David is talking about in, in Psalm 20. He said, thank God for the assurance. He, he 
saying, God has blessed me. He says in, in, in verse number five, he says, may the Lord fulfill all your petitions. I have the assurance that whatever I ask God for, according to his will, I have the assurance that he's going to deliver. I just got to make sure that I measure up and I stand up and I line up with God. I have the assurance. It may be running me crazy right now. It may be having me knocked down and I have to get back up. But I have the assurance if I stay with the Lord, the Lord will bless me. I have the assurance that if God keeps my mind, he can keep my body. I have the assurance that doesn't matter what the doctor really has to say, I know the great physician himself. His name is Dr. Jesus. It doesn't matter what the bill collector has to say, I know the great baker himself. His name is Jesus. It doesn't matter what you have to say, I may not mean very much to you, and you may not like my ball head, and that's all right too. But the good thing about it is, our servant God has created me, and he's made me to be one of his favorites. Not only has he made me one of his favorites, he has given me faith in him, and because I have faith in him, I have I want to, I have favor in him. And I'd rather have favor than have money, and every time I turn around, God just keeps sprinkling some favor. I, I got the fall. I got the favor of God. I have the fall, and I thank God for the fall. And it doesn't matter what situation I am, I know that God has given me the insurance that I have the favor of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Well, look at the rest of that number of songs. The psalmist says, some people trust in chariots. Some people Trust in horses. And in those days, they used horses and chariots to fight their battles. And many men trust in horses. Many men trust in chariots right. to give them the victory. But if you are a child of God, you ought to remember the psalmist says, you ought to remember the name of our Lord. Some people trust in guns and knives, but I trust in the name of the Lord. David says, you come with swords. You come with, with weapons, but I come in the name of the Lord. Let me just share with you. The name, the word names means God's authority. The word name means God's character. We need to get in touch with God's character and God's authority. When we walk in God's character and God's authority, then give us victory is no problem. I trust, in, I trust in the name of the Lord. And when I trust in the name of the Lord, when you look at this word Lord, it is it's written in all caps. That means that he is the supreme one. He is God. He is the diligent one. He is God. He's the one that makes a way out of no way. It is Elohim God. The Elohim God means that he is the judge and he is the ruler. Thank God for God. He's whatever we need him to be at the time we need him to be. Oh, how did you get that assurance, preacher? I'm so glad you asked. Oh, it was over 2,000 years ago. His son, Jesus the Christ, he took a tree, I tell you. He marched up he gave his head to the ribbon. He gave his feet to the nail. He died, I tell you. Didn't he die? He died on a star hill called Calvary. Mean men killed my Lord. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. He died, I tell you, on a star hill called Calvary. They took him off the cross. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because he didn't need it too long. But all of that Thursday morning, all of that Thursday morning, all of that Thursday morning, he He got up with all power. He got up with all power. Victory power. He got up with all power. In this. And your heart's desire ought to be to please God. There may be somebody in this room today who have not trusted Jesus as your personal savior. This is your moment. This is your time. You need to come to Jesus. Just as you are now, I hear you don't wait till next Sunday. Next Sunday is not promised to us. You need to try Jesus today. Come to Jesus just as you are. There may be somebody here who has trusted him, but have not been committed to him. Don't let what God has given you go to waste. Trust him. Bless him. 
be a walking testimony for Jesus. And he will make life better for you. The door of the church is open. The invitation is in here. You need to come to Jesus. Come to Jesus just as you are. The door is open. Come to Jesus. Just now. The door is open. Come to Jesus. If you're here and you don't have a church home, or you're in between church homes, I invite you to come to the New Beginning Church where Jesus is the center of attention and he's the main attraction. The door is open. Will you come? The door is open. If you struggle with sin and you got caught up in this battle and you can't get out, Come, let the church pray with you and pray for you. The door is open. Only trust him. The door is open. Will you come? Just now. The door is open. Only trust him. Only trust him. Only trust him. Father God, we thank you now. We bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and grace. We thank you, Lord, that you are our strength. We thank you, Lord, you are salvation. We thank you that you, Father God, is in our presence. We thank you that you are our deliverer. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us strength and give us power, that you are our assurance. Lord, we ask you to keep the glory, all honor and all the praise. Allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, and powerful name of Jesus and Christ we pray. We ask it all. Amen. Let me thank those who join us by live broadcast. Thank you so much for joining us here at the New Beginning Church, 4251 Shiramai Road, Houston, Texas. If you have in the Houston area, come by and visit with us. You'll be glad that you have come, and we'll be glad to have you. Thank you again. If you want to contribute to our ministry, you can do so by Cash App. Our cash app tag is NBC Souls, cash tag NBC Soul. Again, thank you so much. God bless you, and God keep you as our prayer. Well, we thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the awesome.